Good morning. Welcome to church this morning, Christ the King Sunday. Welcome to those I can see here. Welcome to those who are online and joining us live. Welcome to those who join maybe later on in the week or next week. Although if you're watching like in a week or two, it's not Christ the King Sunday anymore. It's now well past that. But today, it is Christ the King Sunday, which we will talk about more in the sermon because it's a weird sort of, it seems quite self-evident, Christ the King Sunday, but there's more to it than that, which we'll talk about in the sermon. Um, how's everyone doing this morning? Long pause there. Sound like Cecilia, like, how you doing? Good? Nice? Good? Good. Glad to see you're all doing good. Um, I have a bunch of announcements, so I'm going to get right to them here. Um, for those of you uh, who brought in pictures or mementos for All Saints Sunday a few weeks ago, um, I think today would be a good day for that to be the last day, and then you can take them with you. So if you're here this morning and uh, you want to grab them on your way out, that'd be great. If you didn't come today and you're watching right now online or maybe later in the week, you can come and grab those at your, uh, your convenience. And if they're still here later in the week, like next Sunday, I'll probably just pack them up and I'll have them back here in the sacristy for you. You can grab them whenever is good for you. So pictures and mementos can be picked up. Um, offering envelopes for you, House of Prayer specific people, because I know we have people that watch from all different places. Um, new offering envelopes are in. If you are a person that uses the hard copy offering envelopes, um, they begin, like the actual usage of them begins next Sunday for Advent at the beginning of the church year. And they are at the back of, of the church here in the narthex. That's like the gathering space as you walk into the church. Um, they're on the left side when you're coming in, right side going out, and they're all in alphabetical order. If you don't see your name there, um, we might just have thought that you used the online method or, who knows, we don't get things perfectly around here all the time. So uh, if, you're, if you can't find your envelopes back there and you want envelopes, we'd be glad to help you. And of course, for many people, um, the envelopes isn't the only way to give here. And I just want to say, like, the people, like, I, the way that you all have given in the last year has been really awesome. We just had our budget meeting. Um, it was very encouraging the way that you all have given to the church. And I think we're really good stewards of that giving, and we use it in great ways. So just thank you for that. And, uh, if you don't use the envelopes, you can use the online way. Some people have just their bank send their your offerings that way. That's a cool way to do it. Um, or people just mail in, like, checks in an um, regular envelope. That's a great way to do it. Any, any way in which you give is fantastic, and it's well, we, we receive it, and we take good care of being good stewards of that. Thank you. All right. Speaking of thank yous, thank you to everyone who bought spaghetti last week or made donations to the youth group. Um, it was our first of our official, like, youth gathering fundraisers, um, youth gathering next summer in Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, and we made, like, $1,200, $1,300 last week. So that's a really good start to the trip. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who helped out and, and gave us money and bought spaghetti. Thanks especially to those who I know don't like spaghetti but bought some anyway. Um, appreciate the sacrifice there. Not everyone's a spaghetti person. We're going to do other fundraisers, so, so you can keep giving your money. Um, things going on this upcoming week or two. Today is the cathartic throwing event at Rehoboth. Like, come on, that's one of the best church event names we've ever come up with. A cathartic throwing event. I mean, shouldn't a lot of our meetings start with a cathartic throwing event? I think council maybe should start with a cathartic throwing event. Um, so today over at Rehoboth, starting around 1230 to 2, depending upon how the weather goes, they're doing a, it's a pumpkin toss, pumpkin throwing event. Um, apparently someone thought that this was like we throw pumpkins back and forth to each other, but that's not it. Um, rather, the cathartic aspect of throwing the pumpkin is to see it get smashed and broken up. So um, I don't know if any of you are going to go over for that, but if I didn't have a soccer game for one of my kids, I would definitely go because that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, there'll be food also, but uh, yeah, go on over to Rehoboth. Um, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, here in the sanctuary, I'm offering another one of my spiritual mindfulness uh, opportunities. It's not really a class. It's like a chance to come and learn about uh, mindfulness, meditation. Um, specifically, uh, I've been doing this for a while, but we've sort of pivoted this month to doing more Ignatian-focused things. Um, we had a class two weeks ago, or we had an opportunity two weeks ago on Tuesday in the afternoon. Um, I think it was really good for those who came. So we're going to do another one this uh, Tuesday night. There's one person I definitely expect to be there. Um, <laughs> so this Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, it's going to be a really good thing, I think, for people that will be part of. It's been very good for me, so I encourage you to it also. Finally, last announcement. In two weeks from today, here at House of Prayer, for House of Prayer official members, we're going to have a congregational meeting for the budget. 
And just since I said the word member, I just want to say, like, you don't have to be a member to be part of our church in any way, shape, or form, except for voting on stuff. But other than that, there's, like, being a member doesn't, it's not the be-all, end-all. But for those who are members, we need to do, like, official business, like, kind of things every once in a while. So in two weeks, we're going to vote on our budget uh, for the 2022 year. So anyone that's a voting member can vote then. Um, there's a, a version of the budget out there on the table when you walked in today. If you are a person that's joining online, just let us know, and we can send you a digital copy of the budget Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then two weeks, we'll have a congregational meeting that'll be for in-person, and we'll have a Zoom link also for those who are interested. You can join that way, and we'll have a quick meeting to talk about the budget, have it presented, and uh, invite any questions, and then we'll vote to approve it. Okay, that's a lot of announcements. Let's see who's joining us online. I love, actually, I know this, for maybe those of you who are in the room, it seems a little, like, boring or whatever, but I really like, like, I could see all of you. It's really nice to see who's online for those who respond. So just as I look real quickly this morning, Quay Sean, good morning to you. You are the first on here. Denise and Terry, good morning to you guys. Brian Cole, good morning to all of your family. Joyce Bruce, good to see you on Wednesday at Bible study. Nice to see you on this morning. Diane Cannon, good morning to you. Um, that's all the comments. I, I don't see a whole lot of comments. Is that it, Joe? Do you see any other comments? Because you're not doing anything else up there, running the audio, the video, and all the things. That's all the comments I see. And uh, folks, if you'd like to, if you're joining at home, if you'd like to add comments on there, we're talking about um, in the sermon. I'd be glad to have your input on. And you people here in the room too. You have to text me though if you're in the room. Don't yell it out right now. Um, but you can type it out right now on your phone. But I'm wondering, um, it's Christ the King Sunday. What it looks like, where you see Christ being king in the world. And uh, faith sort of changed my sermon a little bit here. I'm still trying to change the language on the fly. Um, but Christ is king all the time, everywhere, right? But sometimes people don't act like that. Sometimes we don't, we don't act like that. So my question for you, and feel free to write it in the comments, or we could t we'll talk, I want to hear your, your comments in the room here when we get to the sermon. Where do you see the kingdom really being lived out? And where do you see it not being lived out? Where are we missing it? You can think about that and... Then you can respond a little bit later. Okay, that's all the announcements I think I have. Ben, good morning to you again. Good morning. We're at Faith Together, sitting very close to one another. Now we're much farther away. Would you gather us with some music?
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and each other. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love. Welcome those you send and we treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those who God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk to the youngest among us for a moment. There's any children out there? I see one with us here in the room. And I know there's children out watching right now. And if you're not watching now, maybe you're watching again later in the week. And so I always do a little moment here where I read from our Spark Story Bible. Um, looks like this. We're on page 252 today. 252. And I say this regularly, but I'm going to say it again. These are great Bibles for kids, especially under 10 years old. And if you would like one for one of your kids or for, I've even given these out to octogenarians. And so um, that's people in their 80s. If you would like one of these Bibles, we are glad to give them out. In fact, we've just given out two in the last two weeks. So we are still giving them out whenever people ask for them. They're great Bibles. So we are on page 252 today. We've been digging into the stories of Jesus now for a little bit, which seems obvious because we've been reading, reading the Bible all the way through. So at the very beginning, Jesus hasn't been introduced yet. That's the Old Testament part, but now we're getting into the Jesus stories. And this one is called Jesus Goes to Nazareth. Looks like this. It's a short one today. 252, Jesus Goes to Nazareth. Jesus went to synagogues, holy places where people worshipped. He went to teach people about God. He went to synagogues all over even in his hometown, Nazareth. Jesus told the people, I was sent to tell you that God loves you and poor people and sick people and people in prison. But the people didn't believe Jesus' words. Why are you talking about sick people and poor people and people in prison? Everyone knows that God doesn't care about them. I am here to show you that God's way is love for all people, said Jesus. The people began to grumble, 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 grumble. Their grumbling grew to shouting. Their shouting turned to shoving, and their shoving turned to chasing Jesus out of the synagogue. Go away, Jesus. Jesus went away from there, but he kept on telling people, and showing people about God's love. So the picture here, it looks like Jesus on this side. He looks sort of concerned, cautious, unsure of himself, while there is a group of angry people over here. If I'm looking correctly, it's all angry men. I don't know what we make of that one, but they are not happy at the things Jesus is saying. They're very angry. I'll show it to Miss Jackie back here. You sit behind me, you don't get to see the picture. Yeah. Um, as you know, for those who have watched a few times here, you know there's like a sentence or a question at the end. This one says, think of someone who is sick. Pray for that person to know God loves him or her. That's a certainly a good one. I find this story, though, has some better things, to, some, like some better points to wrestle with. First of all, Jesus goes to synagogue. That's like going to church. Um, and so, like, church is an important part of Jesus' life. I think if Jesus lived in our world, though, he would actually like how people could be part of church and be at home or be out doing things outside, or you, you could be part of church in different and new ways. And being part of church was what was important, not being necessarily at the church, I think. The second cool thing about this story is Jesus keeps telling these people to love everyone. And he talks about sick people and poor people and imprisoned people. And we could add probably tons of people to our list of people that Jesus would add, because it does say Jesus says to love all people. So we can think of a lot of more all people um, to add to our people that Jesus loves. But what do the people do? Like, the, what do these people that were part of his church community do when he says they should love these people? Did you notice? They get really angry. Like, the thought that we should love poor people, or sick people, or people in prison, or again, 
add other people in our list right now, people maybe of different skin colors or different ethnicities or different genders or different sexuality orientations. Like, that would, that was, that would all fall into all people, right? Like, the, obviously. And the people of Jesus' church get mad at him for the death they have. Um, notice that Jesus doesn't back off. He doesn't say, oh, I see you're all mad. You know what? You don't have to love everyone. Just love the people that it's easy to love or the people that you want to love. In fact, it, it gets so heated that they chase Jesus out of his church. Crazy, right? So here's the thing, I think, boys and girls. Um, that we're called to love everyone. Everyone. And there's no exceptions. There's no, like, love everyone except for that kid sitting over there by themselves, right? Or love everyone at your school except for the bully. Jesus actually wants you to love everyone. And sometimes that makes the people around us mad. If we're honest with ourselves, sometimes that makes us mad. There are people that I don't want to love. There are people that it's very difficult for me to love. I'm sure that's the way it is for you boys and girls. If we asked all the adults in this room, they would say that they have trouble loving everyone. Hopefully, though, no one here is going to yell at me or each other for saying we should love them. But it's hard to do that sometimes. And so, boys and girls, if it's hard for you to love everyone, that's okay. However, Jesus does call us all to love everyone else. So go do that as well as you possibly can. The first reading is from Daniel, the seventh chapter. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming from the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was present, presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, and that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and its kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Psalm for today is Psalm 93, verses 1 through 5. The Lord is King, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty. And he is armed with strength the Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved ever since the world began your throne has been established you are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O oh Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have 
have lifted up their pounding ways. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Testimonies are very sure, and holiness benefits your house. Oh, 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 The second reading is from Revelations, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before this throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood has made us a kingdom preserving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him and those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Today's gospel is from John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers, followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. That the words of our mouths 
meditations of our heart to be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is a sermon of dialogue. I invite you to interact with me a little bit here. Just uh, want to get you thinking about that. Um, we're going to talk about All Saints, or not All Saints, um, Christ the King Sunday. Um, and so I want you to be thinking, I know someone has already commented on the live stream here uh, to this question, um, Jesus is always king. Jesus is always reigning. What does it look like when people actually dare to do his kingdom? And what does it look like when people don't do his kingdom? We'll come back to that. I'll give you a minute to think. That doesn't mean you can't pay attention to this next little bit. So pay attention. Let's do both things. Christ the King, one of the, uh, the festivals of our church year, right? This is actually the last Sunday of the church calendar year. Um, the church calendar year does not follow like the regular calendar of the rest of our lives. This is the last, it's like New Year's Eve, sort of, without the party, or the little hats and stuff. Um, Christ the King Sunday has been named, although it has not been named this for a super, super long time. Like, a lot of our festivals go back hundreds and hundreds of years, if not the whole way back to, like, Jesus or the Old Testament. Um, Christ the King Sunday is only about 94, 96 years, 1925. So what is that? I can't do the math. It's, like, over 90 years old. 1925 was when Christ the King Sunday was instituted by Pope Pius XI. You know why he instituted uh, Christ the King Sunday on this day of the year? Any ideas? You know what was going on in the world in 1925? I don't think anyone here was alive then, right? What's that? I said that um, at faith, and then I got told I was wrong. Thankfully, because you don't want to continue to be wrong if you're wrong. Apparently, the Depression started in 1929 with the crash of the stock market. I haven't got a chance to look this one up, so we might live in the ambiguity, but I really appreciate you said depression, or because that's why I said I was told I was wrong. <laughs> Great minds think alike, even incorrectly sometimes. <laughs> um, 1925, so uh, Pastor Susan uh, told me that that was the year that Mussolini, you know, the head of uh, Italy, declared that he was king of everything, not just Italy. Um, 1925 was the year that uh, Adolf Hitler, though not at his full power in the Nazi party, but it was the year that he wrote Mein Kampf. It was, you know, a decade or so after World War I. Um, the uh, European part of the world was in great disarray and trying to rebuild back and trying to figure out identity. Um, it was a time of high levels of secularism, that is, people turning away from church and sort of figuring out their, their own identity away from God. It was a time of that identity being very strongly connected to nationalism. Nationalism, again, in Italy with Mussolini and Germany, I mean, that's sort of how the Germans raised their power with this super, hyper, overwhelmed identity and nationalism in their country over anything else. And so what does the beautiful church do? Like, the church has got it wrong lots of times. But beautifully, Pope Pius XI in 1925, in the light of secularism, these kings, these leaders declaring that they're kings of all the world, what does he do? He creates a church day and calls it Christ the King. Like, isn't that awesome? Like, it's a declaration against the rest of the world, of everything else going on, right? Like, the Pope, the church for the world is declaring, like, you know, we don't fall in line with the rest of the world. We don't fall in line with these other trends that are going on in the world. We declare Christ is King. Not Italy, not Germany, not Mussolini, not anything else, right? It's awesome. Isn't that a cool thing to think about right now in the world? Like, isn't Christ the King, built on that foundation, super relevant for us here in 2021? Right? It's so good because there's all these things that are pulling us away from Christ's kingdom right now. Some of them, those very same things that were going on almost 100 years ago, but then there's lots of other things, too, that pull us away. So I asked the question, um, and again, sometimes I like to hear what you all are thinking about things. Um, where do you, so Christ is King. And everything else isn't king, like other things that pull away. Where does Christ's kingdom happen? And where do, where do we mess it up sometimes? Good. I know, it's hard to think of it. Or maybe you're just, this is hard. I'm an introvert, too. If I were sitting in your seats, I'd be like, don't look at me. I get it. Yeah, Joy. Yeah. 
Yes, you mentioned there uh, the things we consume with our like TV watching, music, uh, the tensions that exist in school. Yeah, those are great observations, and um, it'd be like it feels like the perfect like small group for a thing to start processing through. Like because we do see complete anti kingdom kind of stuff there, right? I mean, Jesus is always king, but we see the worst of humanity in some of those things, and I would say we also see the best of humanity in some of those things too, like. Every once in a while, beautiful things happen at the school board meeting. I mean, there are a, a group of people that by and large are on school boards there because they deeply love the children and they want the best, even though things don't always, like the intention is often good. Um, there's some great stories that I've watched on TV or great music that really I find inspiring. That was good stuff there, yeah. And there's really heartbreaking stuff. Chuck, I see your hand slowly going up. Uh, the hot, you're saying that's the where you see the kingdom coming to fruition there. Amen, yeah, yes. In hospitals, by and large, that is where people are willing to roll up their sleeves and be servant of all, right? Just very Jesus-like. That's a great one. Yeah. And people that work at hospitals and people that go in are recipients of care at hospitals. Denise wrote here in the live stream, um, she wrote, uh, I witnessed Jesus' kingdom this past week when people and businesses from far-reaching geographic areas and all different walks of life pulled together, chipped in, pitched in, and jumped through hoops to make sure the Aliquippa Alumni Band was able to attend Aliquippa's playoff game this past Friday night. Everyone put everything aside, boundaries, profits, pride, loyalties, to make something good happen for this community and its children. That is what the kingdom looks like. That's a good one, too. I know this has been sort of a, a storyline, at least on my Facebook feed I've seen, where a bunch of adults have stepped in to help support the Aliquippa Band because it's such a small number of kids. And, uh, yeah, not just those adults that have been, like, helping to play, but, like, the whole community has gathered around supporting from all far-reaching places. Yeah, that's good. It's so easy to get caught up in the negativity, right? And then there's this beauty. The kingdom is coming. So um, at the end, or in the gospel, it's the end of, of John's gospel here, right? This, this moment, this confrontation between Jesus and Pilate. Um, Jesus and the state, right? Pilate is the representative of Rome. It's like the biggest, most powerful country perhaps ever to exist on the planet. And Pilate isn't the king of that country. The Caesar is. But for all intents and purposes, in that region, Pilate is king. His... It, I said um, at faith, it's sort of like the governor, if you gave the governor unbridled power in every way, shape, or form. I mean, like, if Pilate says, you should die, you die, right? I mean, Pilate has that sort of authority over everything. And so here he is representing the most powerful economy, the most powerful power country ever on the history of the planet against Jesus. And he wants to know if Jesus is the king, which is such a trick question because he's sort of the king or at least loyal to the real king of the world. And Jesus, Jesus lays out this back-and-forth language. I'm going to read it again here. I know you just heard it read, but um, this, this, this phrasing that church people have used for a long time, he says this. My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from this world. Now, I have heard faith people quote that line a lot in our world, especially in our Western culture world. And I've heard faith people say, oh, yeah, Jesus says his kingdom is not from this world. It's from somewhere else. And so, therefore, as faith people, our inheritance, our thing isn't really here. We're just biding time. We're just hanging out. We're just doing our thing until the real thing happens when we die and we go off there. It's like we're evacuated to the good place, and that's when everything will be good. Everything will be set right, and God's kingdom will there. It happens up there, out there, far off in heaven, right? So this part doesn't matter. Just, just get through it. And we've even said stuff like, if you are particularly persecuted now in this world, if you have it really miserable, people hate on you and all that business, Jesus talks about how that's a good thing because then the kingdom will be even better for you. So you're blessed when people are acting terrible to you. Is that the way it really is? Is that what Jesus is trying to say here? Like, Oh, yeah, Pilate, um, this is all a bunch of crap, but Jesus, God will fix it down the road someday. No, like, no. It, it, that, like, completely ignores 
his whole life before this moment, right? Jesus keeps going around to place after place, people after people, and he tells stories, and he begins them by saying what? The kingdom of God is at hand, right? And it looks like this, and he tells stories like where people get beat up and the religious people don't care for them, but the enemies do. And he, and he goes around and he heals like people that aren't cared for, aren't loved, or who do bad things and who are just the scum of society. And like Jesus draws extra close to them. And every time that he has power, like he shows off his power in healing people, like he gives more of his power away and cares for more people that are on the fringes of society. Like this collision of the most powerful culture in the world against Jesus is really a collision of two completely different ways of thinking. Like it's all about power. The, the peace of Rome, Pax Romana, was all about power through authority and, and, and leveling out your hand of the army. And Jesus shows up and power for him, authority, peace, comes through giving it all away. And it's not about some future moment. It's about right now. The kingdom is at hand now. I mean, in just a few minutes, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom happen someday when we all die and go to heaven. No, right? Your kingdom come now on earth already now, currently, as it will be in that future moment. So we are called to be people on Christ King Sunday who are making a different sort of kingdom happen in our world. And, you know, in Jesus' day, that kingdom that prevailed in power in the world didn't get it. Pilate's, like, speaking a different language altogether than what Jesus is speaking about. A hundred years ago, roughly, when Christ the King Sunday was instituted by the Roman Catholic Church, the world didn't get it. They were too busy looking for power in all the wrong places. Here in 2021, as we're getting near to 2022, the world doesn't. The world needs you. It needs us. It needs us who are Christ kingdom people to put away all of our other ideologies, our other lowercase g gods, all of our other things that pull us in different ways and shoot for God kingdom. May you, as you go out into the world, make God's kingdom One of the ways in which we pray for the kingdom to come is by confessing our faith using, this day, the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry out your forgiveness and to love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. Lord, in your mercy. God, 
you sent your son Jesus to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things, longing for the freedom to flourish from ancient trees and wild grasses, grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. Lord, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in your work. Lord, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering, especially those we now name silently or aloud. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We raise these prayers up. Prayers of the church community this morning, far and wide. We pray with Jenny. She continues to offer healing prayers for Anna and all those dealing with medical issues. We pray with Quaishan. Prayers for Rhonda and for he for peace and joy. We pray with Amy. Prayers for Deborah, Ryan, Maureen, Lana, and Monica. We pray with Diane and her prayers for Amy, for Carol, and for Michelle. We pray with Jean Marie, her prayers for Pam, Shelley, Pat, Dan. Pray with Jamie, her prayers for Brian, for Linda, for Carter, for everyone suffering from medical issues. We give thanks for teachers and educators that create safe spaces for kids to be themselves and to explore and to be confident in their gifts. I especially give thanks for those who helped lead the music the last few nights in Hillwell and for the gift they were to my family. Lord God, you know the prayers that we offer up loud, and you know the prayers that are deep inside, and you know the prayers that we don't even know to offer up ourselves. We give them to you, and now we listen. Communication is best when it's a dialogue, when we speak, and we listen. And so, too, it is that way with our praying. And so now we have spoken, and now we will listen. We will pause just a moment hear your voice. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, 
we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. rise as you are able. The earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, whose rule is gentle and whose way is peace. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one. are indeed holy, gracious, merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence which has sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, peace. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. When you gather, do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. When you gather, do this, and remember me. Remembering his command to love each other, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, 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 amen. These things 
things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Now make us bold and merciful, God, to address you as our Abba, as we slowly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I want to make a quick invitation um, in this moment. Our staff has talked about this a number of times, about what it means to have community now that extends beyond just this physical space. People join every single week live with us, or perhaps in the day or days or hours or weeks, whatever, later, um, and, and how God connects that community together and what that means for us at this Eucharistic table. And so as a staff, we have um, decided to use the language of giving space for people at home to join in the Eucharist as you participate in worship, whether that be right now or whether you join later. It is my suspicion some may be doing this already, but just to give space that we do not think that God is bound simply to this space and time and God's grace and love um, and in God's ability to be in bread and wine. Um, it seems silly that we would put any restrictions on God because none of us really knows how God works or would want to restrict God's actions. And so for friends that are joining at home right now, we invite you, if you are inclined, this is not a mandate, but rather an invitation. If you have bread and wine and you would like to participate in the Eucharist with this group that is gathered in the room, you are most welcome to join, trusting that God can do God's thing across time and space. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us the people of God, the feast is ready. bread here is wine Christ is with us he is with us break the bread taste the wine Christ is with us grace here is peace Christ is with us he is with us know his grace find his peace feast on Jesus here Christ is with us, he is with us, we proclaim until he comes, Jesus crucified.
His grace, find his peace, feast on Jesus here. In this bread, there is healing, in this cup of life forever. Christ is with us. Christ is with us. Christ is with us Please rise as you are able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever.
every time we sing that song, and I actually picked the song, I would feel like, not too soon, though, unless the king is active right now in the world, right? So that's the thing. People have got these words of blessing for you. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you, keep you in grace and peace from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Indeed. Friends, peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you for being here to share that peace with everyone.